are you doing back there, Derek? Fantastic. How are you doing up there? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to. Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Welcome to Ready for Mass Media. It's really the first of media writing. Um, my name is Dr. John B. McHale. I got Derek Downey back there running the camera. So don't add too much. We're going to put it on YouTube if anything happens. And uh, back there, we got Chris Bowe. These two are going to be your graduate instructors for your labs on Friday. Um, there are, uh, let me say this. Uh, it was featured in the stop motion animated classic, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and Buddha, I think, said it as well. And every voyage begins with a single step. What we are going to dedicate ourselves to is becoming better writers. If you are the best writer that you're ever going to be, do me a favor, do the person who's sitting next to you a favor, do your best favor, drop this class. I will bring the drop sheet, I will sign it, please. You can still sell your books back. If you drop the class now, you can get your money back. If you will not dedicate yourself to becoming a better writer, drop this class. Of course, you know, when I was a freshman, I was like, well, I was the editorial page editor by the newspaper, so I'm not going to be a better writer. Wrong. Um, how can I say? You know, I often have a, I often want to watch my life, so. Uh, what I will say to you is, every writer, Hemingway, who knows who Ernest Hemingway was? You know why he blew his brains out? Because he knew he had to become the best writer that he could be. And becoming a better writer is a lifetime journey with no destination. There's no destination. You know what I'm saying? I have arrived. I was recently reading Isaac Asimov's Guide to the Old and New Testament. And he applies the Asimovian composition principle, which is he writes from nine to five, seven days a week. Oh my goodness, I'm not ready for that. I want you to write down a word for me, okay? It's erete, E-R-E-T-E, -E. erete. And it is Greek for virtue. Now, Plato and Socrates have kind of been misquoted because we usually think the word means virtue. That is not the best definition of erite. The best definition is to reach, to reach, to try to become a better person, a better writer, a better citizen, a better teacher, a better dad, a better mom, a better friend. Erite means to reach, to strive to become better. That's what we're doing in this class, striving to become a better writer. And I'm going to give you several hints along those lines on how to do that. But that is the key to this class. And there is no destination. I don't know, this kind of has come to my mind. You reach for the stars, and you might not make it, but you may very well land on the moon. And that's the point is to become better at whatever you do. That's the life. Some of you are going to come to me and say, I've got to sign up for another class. It's another writing class. And you're going to say, what's the most important thing you teach, Dr. McHale? And you know what I'm going to say? Somebody tell me. OK, on the count of three, if you don't raise your hand and answer the question, you will write a paragraph about Eric's head. All right? Yes, ma'am? Yeah, what is the most important thing I'm going to tell you to teach? Yes, sir. Writing. Writing. But what about writing? Progress. Progress. Very good, Joe. Right? Yes. Yes. How to become better. To dedicate yourself to becoming better. It's like any athlete. How many people are athletes here? Do you, are you where you want to be and you're satisfied with where you're at? No. Are you what? Are you, will you ever be? Probably not. Hey, late practice. Right? How many people know who Pele was? Now are you a soccer player? What do you play now? What do you do now? <coughs> Tennis. But you know Jimmy Connor. I love Jimmy Connor. He was a Zen master as far as I was concerned. I like Joe Montana, two of my favorite all time. Besides Joe Riggins. Anybody know Joe Riggins? Yeah, they were monster. Anyways, those great athletes all knew that you had to continue to challenge yourself to become better. There's no destination. Does that make sense? I mean, even now, I don't want to teach you these sunglasses on. 
But I'm going to do better, and I'm going to reach for the uh, Money Holly classes. So there you go. So what's the most important thing that I teach in this class? Progress. To reach, to strive, and become better. And look, I've written like eight books and 20 articles and seven films and award-winning TV shows and documentaries that got a man off a death row, an innocent guy. But I'm not the best writer that I can be. Every day I need to strive to become a better writer. And that's what I'm telling you. Do you understand? And if you've already decided you're the best writer, please drop this class. This class is not for you if you're the best writer that you can ever be. Do you guys understand? Yeah, cool. It's customary to nod one's head when asked if we understand. Okay, now given that, today we're going to do several things. But I've got to, uh, hey, I've got to warm up on my fingers so far. Uh, how many people are here in Illinois State? Well, welcome! I think it's the best place in the world. I've taught all over the world, and the, Illinois State is a wonderful place. Here in Illinois State, you can do anything you want to do. You know what's going to separate you from the rest of the people that are applying for that job at the public relations firm, at that newspaper, at that television station, at that radio station? What is it that employers want to see? Experience, you said. Very good, experience. At Illinois State, in these areas, you can get all the experience you want because we have ZMD, my daughter's favorite radio station. We have TV10. We have SDW. We have the Vedette. We have the Indy. You can do these things here, and you can do a daily news broadcast on television at a lot of universities, okay? Who else is new to Illinois State? Welcome, okay? <laughs> You make the right choice. And, and then I, I speak from, the, from that from experience because I've taught all over. Which I just want to welcome you to Illinois State. I love it. It's my home. I've been here 11 years. I have 10 years, so they, they can't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> if I talk naked, there would be a hearing to be a hearing to be a hearing to see if I'm on probation. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> they're gonna have to pry me off like a tick off my laptop. I don't, I don't want my bosses to know that because I still want to rant, but I love it here, okay? And I think you're going to find that you love it too. Take advantage of the extracurricular opportunities because that's what's going to get you your job. Be, being able to work with J News, our online news service, and post some stories is going to separate you from the other people in Northern Illinois, U of I, and wherever else, okay? So welcome, and welcome to this class. I love this class. I hope it comes across. I do play kind of a Sergeant Carter mean because I want you to know that this is serious. I am hard, but I am fair. And in the middle of this course, we're going to demand rigor of you. What does rigor mean? Get ready to write a paragraph. One, yes, sir? Effort. That's right. That's a good uh, definition of rigor. What else? What else does rigor mean? Yes. Hard work, where that's part of rigor. What else? Consistency is an element of rigor. Absolutely. Anybody got other ideas? I would say of all those, um, hard work, consistency um, is high standards. High standards. Rigor. Write that down. How do you spell it? Right. Rigor. High standards. Because one of the things. I can tell you right now, you're going to learn <coughs> four or five things in this class. Number one, I want you to write these down. Okay, write these down. Number one, what will your boss say in 10 years? What will your boss say? We adopt a paradigm of the real world, professional standards. What will your boss say? You want to turn a paper in late? What is our answer going to be? What would your boss say? You say, well, I, I, at the end of year, I really didn't finish the story, but here it is. What would we say? What will your boss say? And what would your boss say? Okay, let's say, how many of you are PR? I mean, you got a great PR gig. You're working for a senator, right? Who's been a senator, and they hire you. And you have a meeting at noon. And you show up at 20 afternoon, or 15 afternoon. What is your boss going to say? You're done. That's the standard.
standard we apply here. And you know what? You're going to hate us for it in the middle of this class. God! I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest complaints about this class, and the one I love the most, is they expect too much of us. Well, that's my job, right? I mean, I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't impart to you how important it is to work in professional standards. That's my job. And you know what? In 10 years, when you're successful, what are you going to do in 10 years? You're going to be a broadcaster. You're going to be a, a reporter anchor, aren't you? You are. I can see it right now. And you're going to write me an email and you're going to say, hey, Dr. McHale, I just got an award for a story and I want to thank you for pushing me to put high standards to my work. You're going to thank me later. But in the middle of this class, you're going to go, boy, they're too rigorous. Well, I'm warning you right now, aren't I? Is it clear that we're going to demand rigor? Is it clear that you might say they're too rigorous? Too rigorous? If the goal of life is to try to become the best we can be, you want me to do that. You want us to do that, okay? So number one, what would your boss say, right? I will put uh, two, three, four, and five down. Just put those numbers down and I'll go and I'll give those to you as we go through the class. Um, so, welcome to the class. If you will learn a lot, that's what I'll say. And the cool thing is, you get to write. We just want to see that you can write. So you get to pick and choose. You want to write about uh, tennis? You can write about tennis. Okay? You're going to have opportunities to do that. Whatever you like. You like NASCAR, you like movies, you like a band. Well, you can write about NASCAR, okay? So you're going to have fun writing about what interests you. But we're going to see quality writing, okay? So, welcome, we're going to learn a lot, and the cool thing is, you know what I love about teaching? Is I learn with you. You guys are going to tell me what the hip shows are. What's the hip show? Breaking Bad. Oh, well, we know Heisenberg, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know me, tread like right? Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Heisenberg, man. I'm all into it. Yeah, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones is good. But students turn me on to Game of Thrones. Students turn me on to Trailer Park Boys. And woo! Are you a Trevor Henry? Just don't laugh. Ricky, I love when he has, Ricky has to, no, not Ricky. Who's the guy that grows? Ricky. Ricky. Is that Ricky? Yeah. When he has to share his knicker, his, uh, Anti-nicotine patch with this 10-year-old girl. <laughs> she got us hooked to some Students turn me on to cool stuff, and you guys teach me to become a better writer. That's why I love my day. Because I'm going to learn while you learn, okay? But, so welcome. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow as writers. We all understand that, do we not? All right, well, let me introduce myself. On Friday, you guys are going to go to labs, and you're going to work with, um, with Chris and with Darren. And I hope you guys get a chance to introduce yourself. Let me humbly introduce myself. And look, I, you know, I know I'm not all that. Okay, I'm fat. <laughs> I eat those. Is it a, really a cereal? The little chocolate, um, they're chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching like this king in California at 2 a.m. eating a giant bowl of these little chocolate chip cookies. They call it cereal? <laughs> a great source of vitamin D when added milk. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm not bad. I'm coming to you. I'm, I'll try my best to learn your guys' names. You're going to have to give me, but I'm not going to do it very well. I, you know, I went to SIU and I got two degrees there. I think. <laughs> I vaguely remember something about it. So I'm not the sharpest tool in the tennis chat, okay? But, but I will say that I do have some experiences that I want to share with you guys all throughout the class. And um, those are going to help you become a better writer. I don't say any of them to be like, I'm all that. You know what I mean? So I, I want you to know I know I'm fat, I'm a little dim, I don't think I'm all that, okay? But uh, let's talk about who I am, just so you guys get to know me a little bit. I sweat a lot. <laughs> I'm an associate professor at the ISU School of Communications, been here for uh, 11 years. Um, I have a bunch of degrees, I have like a degree, uh, like an addiction to degrees. Um, so I, I went to SIU and I got a BA and a master's, a BA for science, master's in communication. I went to NYU, got film production professional certification, which is kind of like an associate's degree. Then I went 
went to University of Missouri and I got an MA in political science, National the Arts, and I went back to a little college there, Columbia College, got a history degree, just because I thought it would be fun. I said I was traveling with the punk band at the time. We were playing CBTVs, we got robbed in the early days, I had a Mohawk. And I thought, my reading list was really bad. I read everything Stephen King wrote, you know, and I'm like, at that point I wanted to increase my quality of my reading list. And I like his his story, it should be her story for half of the time, right? But I love the stories in his reading. It's just exciting. So I went back and got that degree. And then finally a, a professor kicked me out of his office. I was translating historical records out of the Greek. And I was making him come in in the summer, and he said, how many more credits do you need to finish this degree? And I said, I was done nine hours ago. He said, get out of my office. Go get your union card. Go apply for your PhD and get in front of the class. So I walked right there to, up to NU and filled out the paperwork. And a week and a half, I was working on my PhD in communication. And then somebody told me, John, you don't need to keep getting degrees to keep learning. Teaching is a great way to learn. But that's some about me, OK? So I've got a wide range of interest. Um, you know, mostly now it comes back to mass media. I've taught a little bit. Let's see where I've taught. I've taught at uh, Southern Illinois Carbonell, I think. Um, <laughs> University of Missouri, I taught political science there. And I taught public speaking. And I taught mass media writing and video production. Um, I taught at that little Columbia College, uh, psychology and mass media. I taught at Yale. I teach these really cool summer programs which are about politics and communication, which is a lot of what my research has been in the past. I've taught at Stanford out in California. I've taught at Princeton, New Jersey. And I've taught at Northwestern University. And you know, I had some really great students there. The campuses were really good. But I will tell you, I, I get to work with as quality students here at ISU as I did there. Because a lot of those people are, some of those people are born with a silver spoon shoved up there. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they're entitled. And they were just kind of flip along. I find that ISU students work harder than a lot of those students. So, um, whatever, the bottom line is no one can teach you anything really. They can share their ideas with it, and then you have to learn it. And so, what I'm going to do with you is share ideas and hope you have an adoption of what a Scottish origin, which means enthusiasm. That means filled with the spirit um, to learn and apply what we talk about. Okay, uh, so I'm taught at those various places. What are some of my interests? Um, I've directed and produced documentary films and dramatic films. The most important one I got to direct Danny Clover in New York City. It was a documentary about a man on death row in Missouri who was innocent, and because it was shown from Finland to Taiwan, Mexico, Spain. Hillary Clinton saw it. That man now works at a law firm. Um, and that's one of the, you know, sometimes the universe just puts you in the right place at the right time. And I could have kind of blown it off, but, but I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. But uh, that was one of the most, the coolest things I've done in my life. I've written TV drama and feature films a week and a half ago. I was in LA shopping my ideas. <coughs> BBC wants a script, Franklin Park Avenue. Um, uh, it's a television show that I've written, uh, Last Things Into Normal, an hour-long drama about the trials and tribulations of patients and staff members in a chemical rehab center. So ER meets celebrity, inter uh, celebrity rehab, or Grey's Anatomy meets intervention. It's a drama, but it's about rehab, you know, alcohol, cocaine, heroin, sex addiction, gambling addiction. I mean, a lot of things you can deal with in it, you know, mental illness, family issues, legal issues, and then spirituality ultimately is the way out of those cages. So, uh, but stars that I had for having a continuing conversation about that con And I won an award at uh, the Flickers International Film Festival last year for that strip. And then we made a promo of it, and I won an award at Las Vegas Film Festival for next next season on stars. Last days are too long, not rehab. You know, it's like a... It's a 12 minute promo. You guys, this is what I'm about. I just want you to know where I come from. And I write, I try to write every day. I didn't write today. I got my new book in the mail, so that made it so I was a writer. <laughs> I, I'm a writer today, I guess. Because look, if I'm not writing today, I ain't a writer. I'm just a teacher. I like being a teacher. But I want to continue to irritate, to reach, 
will be a writer. It's just, you, FedEx probably my new book. I was like, Marcus, I don't have to write today. This book here says, look, it's on our cover. I'm a writer, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? No, I want this one. This one should be and is. Oh, was it? Alright, well, I'll read that one. <laughs> read this one, okay? I don't want that on tape. Because <laughs> this one has consumables. We'll talk about these books in a bit. And you know, we used to have to uh, uh, use more books. Here's the bottom line. Is, well, I'll talk about what I talk about, about the, what we cover. No book covers what we cover in this class. Because we go from journalism in print, radio, and television, we go to PR, we go to documentaries, we go to uh, television entertainment, and we go to feature films. Then we talk about social media and viral video. No books on the market cover all that. So I used to have to assign and require several books to cover that. There's either journalism, and then entertainment, public relations, and what we've tried to do is bring it all together. But, and this one is a collection from teachers, practitioners, who you will encounter in your future, and kind of give you the skin. And they're also gonna be our best lecturers. So this is crap. This, this one is really, geez. this one is very important. But it's not very, 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 very important like this one is. Because this has all your assignments, examples, uh, and you get it straight from the horse's back. This one gives you other perspectives besides mine. This is usually mine. <laughs> yes? Okay, you don't come in. Well, it is on, this is in the library on the reserve, okay? But it's got worksheets. If you run a copy of the worksheet, Kendra Wood will actually, working with the NSA, find you and sue you for copyright violation. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, it's, it'll be here. You'll be fine. Okay? But you can read the first chapters. It's on in the library on reserve. So you can sit in the library and read it. Um, it's definitively for, for you there. Okay? All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, I, no, go back. I, he keeps talking about himself. He said he wants to know more about himself. No, man, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I know I'm damn, but I've done a bunch of stuff. I've written uh, books and journal articles on media, mass media writing, political communication, advocacy communication, documentary film. I've written a bunch and published a bunch. And you think I'm the best writer I'll ever be? No. I can recognize the skill sets that I lack, and I need to keep up with it. Actually, this guy's got one of the skill sets that I envy. He can write really authentic dialogue in, uh, in dramatic features. And I envy that. <laughs> because, you know, in academic writing, there's no subtext. You know, it's not conversational. There is a statistical difference between X and Y populations, right? But, but he can write really good natural dialogue. And, uh, you know, I envy that in Chris. It's one of the skill sets I lack. So I know I can become a better writer. I work that I do what I'm interested in. Then, I'm afraid you guys are going to tell us what your favorite uh, movies are. Uh, the first one, yeah, no, I mean, I just love it, man. This was a guy who brought the English Empire down with the power of truth, Sayagra. My little boy recently told me, I don't know, fortunate enough, I think Gandhi might be my Jesus. <laughs> yeah, man, but he didn't walk on the water when he was nine. He's such a cool guy. You'll hear too much about it. It's like, I hate going to my Nazis. Yeah, those bums. He said, Dad, we don't hate Nazis, just what they do. It's like, no, man, I hate Nazis. <laughs> One time he was like, um, he was like, man, you know, I had a dream. I want to invent a phone where you can talk to heaven. Wow, it's kind of easy. He played a gig yesterday playing drums. You're going to hear too much of it. What are you doing this job, Paul? A week and a half ago, we played a bar on Malibu, on the beach. He, and I, he played drums and I played guitar. Um, he sings a wicked bull part of Broken Dreams. Anyways, that's what he played in the book. Oh, because he would be like Gandhi. Gandhi, it's a great story, it's a great movie. Uh, Edinburgh, I also like Last Temptation of Christ. I mean, 
remember, people, whenever I talk about this guy, he's a Jewish philosopher. He's George Bush's favorite political philosopher. Um, he was executed by members of the Sopranos because he disrupted the exchange going on outside some church. Um, anybody know what I'm talking about? Jewish revolutionary? Who am I talking about? Go on. He was nailed to the cross by the Romans. <coughs> yeah, you've heard of him. Yeah, he's a political philosopher for Jesus, right? And, you know, it's a great story. Like, that's why we remember it. 300, have we seen that? You know why we see it? Because it's a great story. Troy, woman who wants a thousand ships, you know? Put her way up, blow him out his cheekbones. <laughs> and Brad Pitt, all the way to skirt them down. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm comfortable with my fat inside, right? <laughs> What's happening? No judgment. Yeah, no judgment at all. It's Brad Pitt, man. And speaking of Brad Pitt, he's got abs like Jesus, right? Shaw Shake Redemption. How many people see that? Andy Dufresne, man, that's a great story. You know, to quote Brad, hope is a good thing. Oh, maybe it's the best thing. I love Shaw Shake Redemption. This is Spinal Tap. Anybody see that? This one goes to 11. Well, couldn't you just make 10 louder? But this one goes to 11. <laughs> well, then I talked to one of, the, one of the guys. I said, how did you guys know? Well, he choked on his own vomit. No, they don't know that it was his vomit. <laughs> you can't dust for vomit. And I was talking to uh, uh, David St. Robbins, and I asked him who got the line. He said, we were at 11, so it was everything there for the song. But why am I getting paid $18,000 to speak to them here to talk about the Dusting for vomit line. But you know it. Good job. Yeah, man. It's, it's awesome, right? Uh, well, tell me your job was like, you usually pick one at a time. So, I was what's good with sending uh, that the band died recently. Um, uh, Sons of Anarchy, uh, what's that? Uh, the Wire. How I many people see The Wire? So, you go back and catch it. It's like five seasons. It's awesome. But Stephen King saw it and said it was the best TV show ever. Um, uh, Breaking Bad, I'm all about it. We'll see what happens to uh, Walter White as we come to a close, right? Um, I really have been to Game of Thrones right now. Uh, what else? Oh, no, we're just the new black. Yeah, 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 it's good. It's awesome. I mean, I have seen Netflix is doing some good stuff. House of Cards, is that what it's called? It was good too. So, what's that? That's right, I'm a British series about politicians. Um, well, Arresting Development, anybody? Yeah. 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 The blues. What can I say? I'm a monster! <laughs> but, you know, and then, uh, we always find sins and sign and stuff like that. I'm like, I'd be moving into Jersey Shore. Actually, I have a company that's interested in our um, TV show. We made a reality TV show about the trials and tribulations of running a comedy club in college town. We shot the pilot, and there's a company in LA who I talked to, and we can have that's interested in possibly picking it up the see. It's like all of that is a big crapshoot. But you know, you, you only, you can only win the tournament if you enter it, right? And you're not always going to win it, but it's like you're, you can only win a dice if you pick up the dice and roll them. And you're going to get a lot of losses, but that's just the business. So uh, I'm all about that. Uh, this is what I like to watch. I want you to share with uh, us what you like to watch on Friday, okay? Why don't you proceed? Books! Here we talk about it. You gotta have the book on your desk for Wednesday. This book. Alright? Know it, love it, learn it, live it. Um, it's got all examples to every assignment. It's got the specifications to the assignments. It's got... Well, what I did was take three different textbooks that I used to have to use and a packet of pen, and I crammed them all together, okay? And that's what this is, okay? Um, so I am assigning chapter one for uh, the preface and chapter one for Wednesday. Yes, ma'am? If it's convergent media writing, it is. There was, there was mass media writing before that, but this is the second edition. The, the reason is that, check this out. I'm the best writer I can be, right? Associated Press says that you put 10 p.m. 
and you put a number 10 and then a P period M period. In the book, I wrote, you write 10, 10 p.m., 10 p.m. without the periods. Go! I mean, I can't really have a textbook about writing that explains AP that's wrong. And, and students help me for extra good if they found mistakes. And they found like 80 mistakes. Which just goes to show you what? I'm human, and I can become a better writer, right? So, Convergent Media Writing is the book. And we did use it last year, okay. right? All right, so I need you to get this, and it's at the elbow. That's at uh, Barnes and Noble. There is a version at the library on the reserve that you can use uh, this book. Right? Convergent Media Writing. This is just, again, they just knocked on my door today and gave it to me. It's got a short, um, it is, you're gonna, there's going to be one test question from each one of these chapters, and most of these people are going to come give guest lectures in our class, all right? The third work that you're going to need, I thought I had it. Did I have it? Okay, the third, you're going to need a Associated Press style book. Associated Press, write it down. Bible. What was it in your Bible, Joe? He's a journalist. And if you don't use AP, man, they'll laugh at you when you're not in the room, won't they? I mean, how do you abbreviate Tennessee? What? That for, uh, for the male, you do. Capital T, capital N. G E N N period. I would check in the AP style. How what, what how do you do on Alaska? Is it AL period? Oh, okay, well, what do you see? I don't I would double check in AP. Right now I would. Right? It's not A Z, it's not A K, Arkansas? I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? You got, if you got a question like that, what do you do? What's that? That's right. Look in the AP book. Here's what I would suggest. They put out a new version every year. Go on Amazon and get the last edition. You can buy it used for 99 cents. Okay? And it's going to be good enough. Do you understand what I'm saying? So on that one, save yourself money. Go to Amazon and buy like the edition before the curtain. It'll be fine. They haven't changed how you can get Tennessee. Okay. But if, if it's Pope Francis, is it capitalized or not? Or the Pope is coming to America, is it capitalized or not? And that's weird rules. It's like, if it's the current Pope with his name, it's capitalized. But if it's referring to him without his name, it's lower P. I don't even know. Because you know what I do? What do I do if I have a question about AP? <laughs> Yeah, I just pull out the book and I look at AP. Or I can do a Google search that says Associated Press Pope Francis. And then it'll bring up newspapers where I can see AP and how they do it. Do you understand? What is the Bible of public relations writing and all mass media writing when it comes to style? Number two on that list of five, when in doubt, check AP book out. <laughs> do you understand? When in doubt, check AP book out. <laughs> when in doubt, check AP book out. And I use it today. It's like, I use a, a, a it's, that's Associated Press. I use American Psychiatric Association. What? I'm sorry, I may have misspoken. It, it, I'm sorry. This is AP. Associated Press, this is the book you need. APA is American Psychiatric Association, it's for academic work, and it's somewhat a little different. This is what you need. Look, what we're going to see is there's different kinds of writing for different things. Man, E.E. E. Cummings, how many people know E.E. E. Cummings? He's a poet, he's fun, that's good, that's cool. This kind of writing is not hip when it comes to writing a 30 second television commercial for your insurance company during the Super Bowl. All right? That's a different kind of writing, right? This is the book you need. This is Associated Press Outlook. It is the Bible of mass media and public relations. Artie Wolf, professor, he retired. His daughter worked at a PR firm. When she left the room, they laughed at her because she didn't use Associated Press style. Do you understand? All right? 
Cool. Um, so you, those two books are required. The first one is essential, and I will give you an older version of that. Or if you got that, it's awesome. It's a, you have it by your desk for the rest of your career. You always break it out and check. When in doubt, what do you do? You take the baby. Okay. 2009 version for a dollar. Most of it's going to be accurate. Now they chance maybe some of the online stuff. That's, but you're pretty safe to use it at 2009. Very good, Joe. We'll go to the next thing. Syllabus. Go to write this down. Who got many people have looked at the syllabus? One person, two person. Awesome. Because I will should give you a quiz right now on this syllabus. <laughs> Who knows where the syllabus is? It's not on Regenet. Where it is, is the communication, School of Communication homepage under courses and syllabi. Yeah, before Wednesday. All right? Where's it at? Where's the syllabi? The School of Communication webpage under courses and syllabi. How many people knew that? How many people knew that? Raise your hand. Did you know that? Why didn't you look it up? <laughs> well, I, it's because it's not. No, 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 just a rhetorical question. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it will be, we will post it on ReggieNet. It's on ReggieNet, and it clearly outlines your responsibilities. Look, if you, if you come to class on Wednesday, I assume that you looked at the syllabus and you agree. It's like a contract between you and me. You and I, pardon me. Right? <laughs> so look at the syllabus. And they're going to go over the syllabus on Friday. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, I'm going to teach you the next thing. Number three is always tell a story. All right? I don't care if you do an advertisement. How many people have seen the Brinks ads? The Brinks Home Security ads. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what they do? They tell a story, right? Dad's there, it's all in, I know the music. Da -da -da -da. Hey, baby, come on, I'm going to work. And then what happens? Minor key music. Some of the furious guy with a crowbar. And mom's upstairs with the kids, and bash! You know, this mean looking guy with an axe comes in. The mom's like, ah! And she runs upstairs, and then the phone rings. Hello, this is Joe from Briggs Home Security. Are you all right, ma'am? We're sending someone over. And then the music turns major key again, and the bird goes looking around, and the arm's going up, and he runs away. You know what that is? It's a story. It's a story. You know, when I got my soul for so many people, I never went, well, I was a kid, we didn't have these wireless phones. <laughs> but I saw an ad one time where this young girl, she's in a, uh, a thunderstorm, she gets a flat tire, she pulls over, and then an inbred clip in this pickup truck pulls my hand and it's like, he needs some help, man. And she like gets out of her cell phone, Dad, I'm having trouble. Did you come over and send a record? And then the music turns major scale again. And there's a record and Dad's there and, and Brett Clemens, ah, you know what I mean? But it was a story, right? It was, there was a will won by the young lady to be safe, okay? There were complications as in Brett Clemens pulled up by me and walked some help. Did it end, 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 end. <laughs> <laughs> but the product solved the problem. It answered the dramatic question. It solved her problem. The next day, my youngins and my baby's mother were going to Oklahoma without me. So you know what I bought? <laughs> A cell phone. I was convinced and persuaded by the story. Because stories have a sermonic function. There's a message, and that is, oh, my family's safe, I buy a cell phone, right? So always tell a story. You're writing for newspaper, tell a story. You're writing for PR. Look, if you want to write about Apple, well, whose story are you going to tell? Jobs. Put a face to your company and tell us a story. So what is number three? Then relax on this, guys. Um, we're going to talk. This is what you're going to read, and we're going to talk about this on Wednesday. All right? I'm just kind of giving you an overview. You're doing good. You already kind of got it. The idea. You're going to read about it in chapter one. We're going to talk in depth about this on Wednesday, okay? Um, so you want to think dramatically, and I'll go in depth on these, but then also go to the next one, which is a bottle. Every character has a book. He had to be afraid. He wanted to be free, but he felt guilty. In the middle of the movie, he realized he wasn't guilty. He was inevitable. He's either going to die or he was going to escape. And there was a realization at some point in the middle of that movie, like when he played the Aria. And it was all 
of the music and it was all over and they threw him solitary. How many remember that? Where he forgave himself and he knew he wasn't guilty. He felt guilty because he wasn't a good husband. Okay? But again, what he did was he, he, he forgave himself. Then it was about getting out of jail. What were the complications? This is his Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne, what complications did he face? The others, is that what their name was? The sodomites, what they call the, the late sisters. The sisters. The sisters. <laughs> yeah, the sisters, right? And then what were some other complications? The warden. The warden, definitely. And then some guy even said, I talked to the guy, and they really did it. And then the warden shot him, right? All those were complications. And then finally, the crawl through three football fields of the violent scrap in the world, come out the other end like a bird, they need to frame in the rain with the guy who shot, right? And now him and Red are down there in Mexico. I'm going to find him one day and hang out with him. You know, he's <laughs> a good place to retire. With the files are like Gilligan's Island. Anyways, you see how that's a story. And well, we're going to study this. So tell a story. That's number three, isn't it? That's what I'm going to teach you in this class. At the end of this class, you're going to go, man, he told us this time. I always tell you to say it over and over and over. You're right, but you're never going to forget it. I want you to put it on your arm. Tell a story. Get a tattoo. Um, tell a story. When in doubt, check the book out. <laughs> what else am I going to say? Ask your boss. What would your boss say, right? All right, what's the next thing that we're going to go over at? Structural considerations. No structural considerations. Write it down. No matter. Here I got a suggestion for you. Always take notes. <laughs> structural considerations. This will be on the first test, on the second test, the number of times. Four structural considerations. Unity. Does it all hang together? Variety. Do you mix it up? Pace. How fast or slow does it unfold? And climax, which really goes back to telling a good story. Right? You're going to know these by the time you leave class. Right? And just write those down. Unity does it hold together. You don't need to define it because we're going to go over this in the next week and then throughout the course. But you're going to know structural considerations. No matter what you're going to write in your life, you're going to think about structural considerations. Okay? Cool? Um, I want you to sit where you want to sit the rest of the semester on Wednesday so I can start to do a seating chart and uh, start to learn your names, okay? What's your name? Summer? Summer. Summer. All right, Summer's right here in the front. I already know Joe. Um, what's your name? Taylor. Taylor? All right, well, I'm going to do my best. I guarantee I'll know more of your names than you know of the rest of the class names. Okay? But it's hard because I have like 400 students a year, so. And I already talked to them about the surface tools, right? so. <laughs> That's going to have to be assignment. You're going to learn structural considerations. Is that the important thing we're going to learn in this class? Yeah. Number five is what may be the most important. Quality writing. What is it? This story in the book, or this class in the book, clearly is about telling a good story well. And that doesn't matter if you're writing for, for a newspaper, radio, television, online, feature films, TV shows, public relations to documentary. And quality writing is clear. Actually, put a start by that. This is a takeaway, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your attention one second? According to me, the most important consideration when writing for mass media is clarity. Being clear to the people you're working with, the crew that you're working with, the client that you're working with, and to your audience. According to Dr. McHale, the most important consideration when writing for mass media is what? Clarity. Clarity. And when you came in as a mass media student, you took assessment tests, are they doing that? And it was on there. And you're gonna get it right by the time you leave. You see what I'm saying? Clarity. Now the second one is concise, concision. Every word should tell. You need to tell it in the shortest amount you can. But we'll talk about that. I just want you to write these four down. But you don't have to define them. The third one is that it is correct. That it's accurate. You're getting the facts right. And then the last one is that it's complete. You're telling me where the game is 
how cool it's going to be to put this on your retirement store. You know what I mean? Let's set me on a wild goose chase. Give me all the information I need to mess up you, okay? Uh, those are the five things we're going to learn in this class. What are they? Number one, summer. What would your boss say? Number two, Joe. When in doubt, check the AP book out. Um, number three, Tyler. Taylor. <laughs> tell a story. Number four, sir. Structural considerations. And the fifth must, uh, thing that we're going to learn in this class is what? Characteristics of quality writing. That's right. So, as we kind of wrap it up here, I'll just be ready to bring that soon. <laughs> um, to wrap it up, this is what I need you to do. I need you to look at the syllabus and make sure you agree. The syllabus says we are going to write for print in two cases. We're going to write radio news, television news. Um, we are going to write public relations. We're going to write advertisements. Um, and then we're going to write feature films. Wait, 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 wait. I got a couple minutes. Don't put your stuff up yet. I know you have a doctor's appointment right now, but. This is show, right? So we're going to cover a range. This is what I need you to do for Wednesday. Look at the syllabus and agree. And if you agree with what is required for this class, then don't bring a drop sheet. If you have a problem with the rigor that I'm asking you, do bring a drop sheet. Let's just get it done. And you can go take uh, recreational sciences or kinesiology or whatever. Do you understand? Do you understand? Right? Second, I got one minute. <laughs> Second thing is get this book, bless you, and read the introduction to chapter one. Here's the deal. If you guys come to class, I demand that you read the material that I'm assigning. And if we come to this class and you haven't read chapter one and you're not ready to talk about it, I will just say, please take out a sheet of paper. And you will get to use all the notes that you took on your readings from chapter one. But if you don't read it, you're going, it's not going to be great. Do you understand what I'm saying? I demand, do I expect that you're going to read chapter one in the preface of that book? I not only expect it, I demand it. All right, do I just expect it? No, I demand it. Because then we can have a conversation about it. Guys, every journey begins with a single step as Santa Claus is coming from one foot in front of the other. Remember that? Right? And the moon, great moon is setting. We have started a journey. Wait, we've started a journey of becoming better writers. Thank you so much for joining me as we continue.